All right, good morning. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you for coming to church. I know you knew it would be cool here. Yeah. So I just want you to hold on to this because later in the year, you're going to think back and say, remember when? Remember when I thought it was so pleasant in church? Well, so you'll just move on. I'm going to talk about... Uh, I'm going to talk about patience today. They say you teach what you need to learn. <sighs> so um, this is clearly uh, an ongoing lesson for me. I remember growing up, uh, my mother would always say, I pray every day for God to give me patience. When I came into metaphysics, I realized that if we pray for God to give us patience, I believe how that translates is that God must send us situations to practice being patient in. <laughs> yeah, I think this is absolutely true because if you say, God, give me patience, it's just like all of a sudden the universe isn't going to say, okay, you never have to have an experience where you need to be patient. What's going to happen is the universe is going to send you all these opportunities. I believe this got seeded in me when I was very young. Um, in fact, uh, when I was in the office just uh, before we came in, I said, yeah, I'm talking about patience today. And somebody said, oh, I've been waiting for that. <laughs> I, I thought that was excellent. I thought that was your... I remember hearing from a very early age that patience was a virtue. Yeah? Right? But nobody who was saying patience is a virtue was very patient or virtuous was what I noticed, you know? So it was a very high ideal. So why, I think, why is this important for us? Because life, our life, our, our life is a journey, a spiritual journey, and it would serve us best if we would be patient and enjoy it. See, Ernest Holmes talks about this idea of things being in divine order. Now, we either trust that or we don't. So if everything is in divine order, then I don't have to get too worked up and be impatient so much, because it's all unfolding exactly, exactly as it's supposed to. And I really believe that's true. Honestly, I do. I think even when it looks really bad out in the world, I think that God can use it for a greater good if we are willing, if we will allow that, if we will start to make space in our consciousness for, well, I don't like this, it isn't my preference, I don't think it's a good thing, but I believe that God, who is so much greater than all of this, can use even this situation for a greater good. Good will come from this. Einstein taught that, uh, that time and space were constructs of the mind. So if time is a construct of my mind, why am I impatient? That's kind of interesting to me, since I sort of made up the whole thing about time anyway. So looking back at life when I was uh, younger, I couldn't wait to be big enough to go to school. Do you remember that? You couldn't wait to go to school because those big kids were doing the really fun stuff. You know? And in school, I couldn't wait for vacation. Yeah. I couldn't wait for summer. And I couldn't wait to be older so I could get to a bigger school, right? And I couldn't wait to get a license, you know? And I couldn't wait for the night that I actually got to have the car. Uh, I couldn't wait to graduate from school. I couldn't wait to get to college, to another college, to a job, to a better job, to a vacation, to a different vacation, to a different house, to any house to a relationship, to get out of a relationship, <laughs> you know? Uh, on and on and on it goes, right? And I think that what that was is that there's some component of not ever being happy or just able to enjoy where we are. Maybe I was the only one who had that kind of a thing, you know? But, but it seemed to me I heard an awful lot, oh, when you get to this, that's when you're really going to start to live, when the truth is we are living right now. We are absolutely living right now. When, when I would bemoan as a child, you know, something around this, uh, my mother would tell me, I'd say, oh, I can't wait till the end of summer so we can get to do blah, blah, blah. She'd say, don't go wishing your life away. And I thought that was such a great thing, you know, to, because actually what she was saying is, you know, be present in right now. Today's a beautiful day. Go out and play. Ride your bike. Have a popsicle. I don't know. Do something, right? So I understand now that what happens here, if we are not patient, is, is we miss the journey that's being offered right now. We miss the wonderful people in our life. We miss the experiences. We miss what, what life is revealing to us. Truth is, I'm always in the right place at the right time. That's how principle operates. You cannot 
not be in the right place at the right time. So I'd read this story. Somehow I think this connects, so you'll decide. Uh, after, uh, so a number of years back, after an audition for King Kong, where Meryl Streep was told she was too ugly for the part. Uh, she said that this experience was a pivotal moment for her. She said, this one rogue opinion could derail my dreams of becoming an actress or force me to pull myself up from my bootstraps and believe in myself. And so after the audition, they told her this news and she took a deep breath and said, I'm sorry that you think I'm too ugly for your film but you're just one opinion in a sea of thousands, and I'm off to find a kinder tide. And she said, and today I have 18 Academy Awards. <laughs> so clearly it worked for her. Hmm? I often think about those people who say such things and wonder if they look back and say, wow, I missed the boat there, or, you know, it was a key thing that I said no to her so she would work harder to embrace something greater? Or do they say, boy, I really missed the boat on that one. How, what was I thinking? You know? um, does being impatient make anything better? No. I have yet to see it, right? Does it make things go any faster? Oh, no. Oh, absolutely not. Does it make us feel very important? Yes. Yes, it does. It makes us feel important when we're really impatient. Doesn't the universe know I have stuff to do? Hmm? Now, I think my impatience goes way back. I think I have always been impatient. From the time we first got a microwave, I remember standing in front of the microwave saying, God, I can't believe this takes two minutes for dinner. You know, two minutes for a burrito. This is un When are we going to get some technology here? I think this is why gardening came into my life, honestly, because it's mostly a process. Gardening is not an end result kind of thing. It is mostly a process. When, we were, when I was a kid, we had a big vegetable garden in the backyard. I realized later in life this was a strategy of my parents <laughs> to uh, keep me out of trouble. That you know the garden had to be tended, it needed to be weeded and fertilized, and things needed to be tied up. and bugs and yellow leaves pulled off and stuff. So it required some constant effort. And at least I realized, looking back, at least for those hours, my parents knew I wasn't getting into trouble. <laughs> but, um, but it is a process, right? That many people think that as soon as you plant a tree, it's going to bear fruit. You know, I heard this saying the other day. They said, when was the best time to plant? When is the best time to plant trees? And the, and the, and the response is 20 years ago. When's the second best time to plant trees? Today. Right? So, so you have to allow things to grow a bit. It doesn't, you know, the plants don't care how busy you are. You can stand there and stamp your feet and demand fruit or flowers, but it isn't coming except for when it's time, right? In a few months or even a few years. So I think this is valuable at every stage and every season of, of the garden, at, at every stage and every season of our life. You know, plants need the downtime to come back to give you beautiful flowers. Right? But if we only enjoy it when the flowers are in full bloom, we miss a lot. Lots of beautiful steps along the way. Here comes a leaf, a bud, a flower. So, so in my impatience, one of the things I learned gardening was that I would go out and I would talk to the plants. I'm one of those people. I talk to plants. You know? And so I would water them and put things on them. And then I would lean down and I'd say, be yourself. Yeah, be what God created you to be. And I'd go on about my business. And the next day or whenever I was watering again, water, leaves, be yourself. Be what God created you to be. Somewhere in the process of talking to my plants, I realized that's what I was supposed to do with myself. That's exactly what I was supposed to be doing myself. You know, so I think, yes, there's value in every stage. You know, but then it's thrilling, it's exciting when we say, oh my God, here comes a leaf, here comes a bud, here comes a flower. How many of us have prayed, God, give me patience and give it to me now? Yes. That's me again and again and again. Thinking about this metaphysically, if we don't enjoy the process of life, if we do not enjoy the journey, we probably won't enjoy the destination. Think about that, 
right? Because the idea of the enjoyment will be foreign to our consciousness, right? I think it, it, because that whole idea of enjoying the journey, we want that to become our consciousness. That what we put out, we get back. And if I'm not satisfied, if I'm not content, if I'm not fulfilled now, I never will be. I never will be. Because something changes on the outer plane, that's not going to change my consciousness. Because my consciousness changes, that's why something, that's how something will change out here in the outer world. All right? Change in my change my consciousness and other things will be different. And even if they're not different, I will be different and it will not bother me, which is like the added bonus. That's like the gift with purchase. Who doesn't love gift with purchase? <laughs> right? The gift with purchase is that even if nothing is actually physically different out here in the world, I will be different on the inside and it won't bother me. Aha, I've got the upper hand. You know, so where, where are those things? They're already within us. So one of the things we learn as we grow is that there, wherever there is, is no better than here. That when we get there, it becomes our here. And there will be another there. And when we get there, we will have brought our consciousness from here to there. And there will still be another there, and on and on and on it goes. So this is the meaning of, uh, uh, of the line in, in Luke, where it says, by your endurance, you will gain your lives. That sometimes, I think you just got to suck it up and take a breath. Now, do not underestimate the value of taking that breath. See, in patience, we get our life. In impatience, we lose our lives because we're losing a gift from God in that moment. So Gandhi said to lose patience is to lose the battle. I think that's really interesting. To lose patience means I'm losing the battle. Don't we see that this is so? If we lose patience with someone we love, we've lost that battle. If we lose patience and get upset, we have lost the battle and we no longer, it's not just that we've lost the battle, I think that we no longer have any sense of inner peace. So think about this. Where we are impatient, do you think about that in your life? Because I suspect we all have some area or areas. We're missing out on enjoying that moment because we're busy wanting it to be different. It's very likely there's incredible good there, beauty, God, trying to give something to us, but we're all worked up because of the traffic, and it's not moving as fast as we think it should, or on and on and on. So think about the things that perhaps make you impatient. Long lines, hmm, yeah. Traffic, being on hold, waiting for the waiter to return to the table. That's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, <laughs> wishing someone would shape up and get with the program. You know, all the things that make me impatient. So this is, this is certainly an example of giving our power away. It's like saying, I will give someone else outside of me charge over my happiness. I will make them my false god for today. And with the people we are impatient with, you know, it's like, it's like this. With a very, very small child, you don't hurry them along, do you? You know, when, when a child is just making those first tentative steps at walking, you don't say to that little kid, hey, hurry up. You know, come on, step on it, chop, chop. We got things to do here. No, of course not. You know, we didn't say that. So with other people, it's, it's just my need for them to be different. Maybe it's time to, to let go of that one, hmm? to let go of my need for other people to be different than how they are actually are or who they're showing up as. In my impatience, I'm forgetting God is right where I am. And if God is right where I am, right, where is there to go? Also, if God is right where I am, God is right where they are, that person I'm being impatient with. So when and where I'm being impatient, that's what it would be good to remember, that God is right where I am right now. We say in the science of mind, God is everywhere equally present. So maybe my impatience is because, I don't know, maybe I'm, a tad controlling? I don't know, you know, the, that the world obviously doesn't understand that I in my infinite wisdom see how it all should be and that the rest of the universe just isn't getting it. You know, so certainly there are things that arise that seem uncontrollable or even unavoidable. And I think we have to practice patience and acceptance there too. 
There's a beautiful line in A Course in Miracles that says, I will accept all things exactly as they are. Oh my God, I love and hate that at the same time. <laughs> as with so many things in A Course in Miracles, I will accept all things exactly as they are. Ugh. I would really accept them if they were just tweaked a little bit in the favor that I want them to be, you know? Because my mind goes crazy with that sometimes. No, I will not accept things as they are. I want them all changed to my way right now, anytime between now and right now, right? And I want those people to be the way I want them to be. Acceptance is certainly a key. You know, it, now this is not resignation. It is saying that this is just what is so right now. You know? so, so you don't have to remind me about how important the patience of Job is. Job in the Old Testament had tremendous patience, you know? But I also think Job never had to go to the DMV, <laughs> right? Or had uh, a movie to get to, or, you know, tolerate the delays and annoyances that we all have to deal with. I mean, oh, come on, Job, what did he have to be upset about? You know, oh my God, the camel got loose again, you know? I mean, not the stuff that we're dealing with, but we have to remember that the sooner we are patient with life, the easier life will be. You see, well, all this talk about patience is good. I just don't understand how do I do that? How do I do that? It's really very simple. It all involves breathing, I think. You know, they're just like, I catch myself impatient. I breathe in. Just let it go. Breathe out. God is in this moment. Breathe out. It's not that hard. It would seem that God life is not operating on my schedule quite a bit of the time. Have you ever noticed that? And, and, I, and I have a very significant schedule of how it should all go. But we get so impatient that I think we become patients of doctors <laughs> who have to treat us for all kinds of ill effects caused by our impatience. No wonder one of the definitions of a patient is someone who is under medical care, right? So patience and patience, yes. When was the last time you got up and consciously said to yourself, I'm going to create as much stress in my life as possible today and see how that takes its toll on my body, <laughs> my mind, my emotions, my relationships. You know, that's what we do when we're not patient. I have heard that patience is the compassion we have for the distance between what we are now and what we know we can be. And so I would take that a step further and say that patience is the compassion we have for where someone else is now and what we also deeply hold as knowing where they can be, where they're getting to, where they are growing and evolving into. See, that's the patience that's a virtue, I think. The patience that recognizes that everybody is a work in progress, that we are not done yet, right? That we are, and, and we certainly know by now that if something can provoke us, if it can annoy us, anger us, there is an opportunity for us to grow spiritually right there. So our role is to know that God is right there and to practice acceptance. Do you ever go on a trip? You know, I love, I love to travel. You all know that about me. And part of it, for me, uh, that I think is so great is the preparation. Now, I know not everybody feels this way, but I like the preparation. I like the reading and the planning and the researching and the packing and repacking and then eliminating half of what I've repacked um, and, and talking to other people about it. And, and again, it is the, the process as well as the event. So when I'm going to go on a trip, I actually start months ahead, usually, you know, and, and you know, lay things out or, or at least put them in the suitcase and start to feel like I'm, I'm preparing my consciousness for that whole, whole experience. I guess it's probably worthwhile to ask, where is patience with regards to spiritual healing? Because we teach in the science of mind that as soon as we pray, God has said yes. You know, that God doesn't need time. But we have to be patient with our own changing consciousness, you know, and diligent in our work on it, All right? Do the spiritual practice till it occurs. Yes, there's no time in God, but I'm treating my own consciousness, and I know it takes time to change me. 
Remember where we are now is the place that we wanted to be at an earlier time. Isn't that great to think about? You know, that where we are today, there was a time when we were thrilled about getting to this place. And on the earth plane, it just takes time to get there. And I know we'll get there if we trust. 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 This is how we can say, let go and let God. We're letting God when we trust. Letting God is patience. And when we become impatient, we are no longer letting God. So I believe we all have patience because we all have God within us. But again, remember, just because we say we have God within us doesn't mean that it's being realized or expressed. That becomes our individual work. Yes, we all have God within us. Even those people we see in the news have God within them. Even those people in another part of the everybody has God within them. Doesn't mean we realize it, doesn't mean we express it. So ask yourself, if I were a patient person, how would that feel here? How would that feel when I'm in, you know, the quick line at Ralph's, <laughs> 10 items or less, and I just happen to count that the person in front of me has 16 <laughs> items or more, right? Take a deep breath. All is well. God's in charge. I'm in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Trust, trust, trust. Take a deep breath. Enjoy the moment. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now to remember that right here, the fullness and allness of God, God's infinite loving intelligence spirit is right here. We could not be separate or apart from it. The truth is we are one with God. We are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so in this awareness of our connection with God, I speak the word for each and every one of us that yes, in fact, we are always in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. It couldn't be otherwise. I speak the word for us that, yes, we've heard patience is a virtue, but I know that patience is a divine knowing within each and every one of us. That we trust God, we trust life, we trust the universe, and we absolutely trust that everything is unfolding and happening exactly, exactly as it should. So we include in our prayer right now our family members and friends and loved ones, parents and children. We know right where they are, God is that the infinite spirit of life and love and intelligence is expressing perfectly by means of all these dear ones. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world. So all that's taking place, all of it, we have a God that's big enough to handle it and we trust that it is all in divine and perfect order. Whether it's children being freed from a cave in Thailand or all of the other stuff that's happening in the world around us, we know God's perfect intelligence is unfolding, that everyone who needs to be involved is involved, that only good is the outcome, that God can use all of it for our greater good. We bless our church, we bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know, I believe that we are blessed by being together in consciousness today, that there is raising up for all of us. And so with a full heart, I release this word into law. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.